All right, so next lecture is about uh, convolutional neural networks. Before we go there, uh, we can take any questions you have uh, for neural network. I still don't understand like why is MLP used here because you can have the continuous uh, rotation of an image. Is that the main idea of using MLP? No, it's. I mean, it, it has nothing to do with like the continuous space, three sixty degree space, right? So that's just the output. I mean, MLP were used like because the the way features were treated here. Okay. The features were treated as like uh, a single dimensional vector, and for that MLP is sufficient. We don't need CNNs. Oh, excuse me. Yes, please go ahead. Oh, uh, could you please explain the weight sharing again? Oh, uh, in CNNs. Okay, yeah. And as I said, I mean, don't don't worry if you can't understand this fully. Uh, we are going to talk about this a lot. So j just try to understand like the high level idea we are doing weight sharing. So in in your neural network, what happens is you you have your input signal or your input data, right? And what it's doing is it's just trying to transform that to some other set of values, right? That's what the weights are doing. So that part you understand? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you're doing so in neural networks, for each input data, you have a separate weight. And that's why weights were not shared. And that's why like it, it involved like huge cost. In case of CNNs, again, we are doing the same thing. We have this input data and we are transforming that to like some other set of uh, data points or activations. And in this case, what we are doing is instead of transforming the whole image at once to like certain set of values, we only look at a local neighborhood and we transform those values to something else. All right. So when we do that, we let's say we transform these set of values. Then again, we transform the other set of values. So when we move over those positions, we use the same set of weights to perform the transformation. Oh, okay, okay. And that I allows us to share the weights. So weight okay. sharing is basically use of kernels. Yeah. Yeah, if you say so, use of kernels, exactly, that's right. But I didn't want to say that because we are going to uh, go over that technicality later. Okay. But yeah, yeah you're it. right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so that was just like recap of what we have already covered in the past lectures. Any Any question on that? A question from Pruvi, can you give an example of input where the channels might be more than three? Yeah, Chase, I think already answered that question, same way, okay. And other could be like, uh, you can have your RGB color and you can attach depth to it, right? So you can have a fourth channel, which represents like depth of each pixel. So that could be another example for that. So I think let's stop here. Uh, any questions uh, uh, you have, I, I can take those now. A question from Mohammed. I couldn't get the idea that you need a 4D filter if the input is 3D. Uh, so if your input is 2D, which is like images, right? So in that case, we are using a three-dimensional filter, right? Five cross, five cross three. This three is implicit, it's coming from the depth. Similarly, if you will have a three-dimensional uh, input, for example, videos, it will have an additional time dimension, right? So you will have height, you will have width, of course, you will have this depth, but then you will also have the time. So that's the four-dimensional input. In that case, you will have one more dimension, right? So uh, but for, 40. Like for like this image is like, essentially it is 3D, right? So because it, it has the third dimension in, in like the category of the channels, right? So it has the third dimension as channels and the other two dimensions are just width and height, right? So it's a 3D input, uh, not a 4D input, yeah. the image. 
Yes, theoretically, yes. But we we consider the image as 2D, right? Yeah, okay. So, so okay. Okay, yeah, in that sense. Uh, in that sense, yes. But yeah, I understand. So it's a three-dimensional data. So it's 3D. But if you think about I me, mean, convolution is only being performed like in X and Y, right? The depth is like, it's, it's fixed. We are just considering it at one stack, irrespective of what the depth is. So that is another factor you, you, you should keep in mind. Okay. Yeah. So, but if like, for example, since you're saying that the, the third dimension of filter, you cannot control. So for example, if you have uh, like a 4D image in, in 4D image in the sense that it has RGB value as well and the depth value as well, then mm -hmm. are you saying that there is no uh, library function for that? Like taking that image as an input or like, do you have to- Yeah, yeah, you can, but then okay. the size of the filter will be, the third dimension will be four. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay, then. Okay, I get the idea. And and of course you can have variation. I mean, it doesn't have to be this way. You can still have this as like one or two, but then again, it will it won't be like a two-dimensional convolution. Then you are convolving across your depth as well. So that's kind of you're reducing or transforming it to a three-dimensional convolution operation. Okay. Okay, so there's a very thin line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And yeah, I think that's just technicality. I mean, as long as you can understand like what operation is being performed, I think that that, that that's sufficient. I will say, I mean, do not worry too much about the technicality, whether it's like 3D convolution or 4D convolution, because if you get the idea of the operation, then that's what uh, what matters. Okay. Uh, another question from uh, Prudvi. So the, uh, anything else uh, uh, that answered your question? No, I, I get the idea. Okay. Okay, good, good. good. Okay, so question from Prudhi, what is a good heuristic to determine the size of the filters to use? Uh, that's a very good question. And we will talk about uh, some of that later, but ideally like, yeah, let's hold, hold on to that. I think when we get to like uh, the full models where we talk about features and what these kernels are learning, I think that will be the best time to, to talk about this. But again, that's based on heuristics, just to give you a heads up. And there's no like rule to figure out like what should be the kernel size. Okay. So another question from Anthony, is it just a coincidence that both sets of filters are five cross five? Yeah, it's just a coincidence. And I mean, you can have seven cross seven or three cross three as well. And as I said, most of this like depends upon what kind of input image you have. For example, let's say if you are dealing with very high resolution images, you might want to use like bigger shape kernels as big as 11 cross 11 or maybe seven cross seven or nine cross nine right so it, it all depends like and it's just a coincidence you could have different shape as it it would have been three cross three okay so that was the last question uh if there is no other question i think we can i think there's one more question from uh, nashi is the number of filters to use also determined by a heuristic? Yes, that's true. Heuristic and your experience and a lot of other factors. All right, so uh, if no other question, let's, let's end it here. I will see you uh, on Thursday for the next lecture. Thank you.